Let me tell you a little about, my, about myself. I just, first off, before I do that, I just want to take the time out to thank the Dish League, as well as Mr. Lauren Bell back there, as well as Central High School, my little sister right here, Allie Amar, if y'all know. You know, just uh, that we came out here today to support y'all. But the reason I'm out here today is I want to talk to y'all about how poor choices affect others. How many people here make poor choices? I mean, everybody makes poor choices. And the thing about the poor choices is it's a cause and effect. Do we, do we right here know what the butterfly effect is? I got $5. $5. $5 in my pocket. You. All right, all right. Yeah. Well, if you go back in time and crush on like insignificant, like a butterfly can affect everything else in the year. True. True. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got it right on the first child. Yeah, that's right. You got the five. But that's, that's what it means. It means something small that can affect you later on down the road. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I had a teammate in high school. I went to Ailey Taylor High School. Does anybody know who Martellus Bennett is? Or Michael Bennett? Yeah. They went to my high school. Well, we had, we had, we're a top tier high school in Texas. And um, one of my teammates, my four star quarterback, he decided to get high before the playoff game. You know, and this is a big playoff game. This is our first time going to playoff in like five years. So he got high, him and the running back got high, and it hurt the team. We lost that game 50 to 14. And just that small thing about him hitting that blunt and being selfish, by him being selfish, that affected everybody else in the long run. And that right here is what we call selfishness. And there are many other ways that we can show selfishness, not only just in sports, but in our life, period. And I went to three schools. I went to Kilgore College in East Texas. I went to Clark Atlantic University. And then I went to Northwestern Oklahoma, where I played with Tiafla and Ant, where I'm at now. And as I was going to this college, I went to Clark Atlanta, and I was on full scholarship and stuff like that. And before I was going out there, this was the day before I was getting ready to go out there to Atlanta for uh, fall football, me and my dad got in a huge heated argument. I'm talking about, I hate your kids, I never want to talk to you again, and stuff like that. And so me and him, we had discrepancy. I didn't talk to him the next day when I was getting ready to fly out to Atlanta. So I'm on the plane, boarding to go to Atlanta. Getting ready to, to getting ready to fly out to Atlanta. I called my cousin and said, hey, coach. I said, um, I just want to let you know that I'm uh, I'm on my way to Atlanta. He said, okay, that's good. But the thing is, y'all tell you, you need $650 for you to have a dorm room. Because if you don't, you ain't going to have one somewhere to lay your head. I'm like, really? Are you serious? You're really telling me this? Not not when I'm at home. You're telling me this while I'm on the plane to Atlanta 10 minutes before takeoff that I need $650. I ain't going to have nowhere. I'm going to be basically home. That's what you're telling me. He's like, well, you got to find a way. And, you know, being that I got into this argument with my dad, I wasn't even able to get that money from him because that was the person that was financially stable in my family. I mean, how many people grow up in a single home, a single parent home? My mom, she wasn't working at this time, so she didn't have the money to provide for me. But at the end of the day, God, when there's a will, there's a way, and God made a way for me. And my, my, uh, my head coach's mother, Ms. White, she was able to bless me with the money to go go to uh, Clark Atlanta. But regardless of that, whether my father was right or wrong, I shouldn't have challenged his authority. That goes for the same with any other person who has authority over you, whether it's your mom, your teacher, or whether it's your boss. Because these people are over you for a reason. They're over here to impact you alone. Their impact, the impact, the way when you say something, your words can affect your future. And like it says in Matthew, Matthew 12, verse 37, for by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. So you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you speak what you say, it's going to hurt you in the long run. And it's so critical that you watch what you say because those words may hurt you or hurt the people that's around you in the long run. And I have personally, I have personally myself made poor choices in my life. Some, some of these choices abruptly could have hindered my life as well as my football career. But I'm here to listen testimony to you that Jesus... Please, with Brianna Sanchez, please come to the attendance office. Savannah Martinez, Rosette Martinez, okay. the attendance office, please. But I'm here as a living testimony to tell you that Jesus will forgive you no matter what, and that he has a plan and purpose for each one of y'all in this room. And like in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and for hope. If you don't mind buying your head for me, I'm going to pray for y'all. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Lord, please forgive us for our sins and keep us in the past and the present. 
Thank you for blessing me and the chance to the opportunity to see another day. Lord, thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Lord, as I pray over here, Lord, that you bless the meeting, Lord, from Central High School, Lord, all these kids that's in this room, Lord. Continue to bless them all and guide them to the people that you want them to be, Lord. Continue to keep them, keep their faith, Lord, and still be, Lord, through their trials and tribulations, wherever it may be, and give them their heart's desire, Lord, and, as well as keep their faith in you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, okay, so now, who got some questions? I know I got some questions about college. Some questions, I know somebody got some questions. Questions about football, anything about college. It don't matter what it is. I am. Nobody? <laughs> Nobody. I got a question, not about college, but about like poor choice and stuff you was talking about. Uh, like when you're growing up in Texas, if you have like people around you who made poor choices that hindered them from becoming like a college athlete. Like yes, I did. Well, one of my one of my closest friends, he was he was really into the street. He was a, I met him in Juco. He, he was from Texas too, he was from Houston. And we, we automatically clicked because we was both from Houston. And we didn't know nobody, so we was real close. And the thing about it was, he had, he ended up, he ended up falling out track because of his brain and stuff like that, so he came back to Houston. And once he came back to Houston, he got back to living in the streets, trapping and selling drugs. And he ended up dying, he ended up dying April 19th on his birthday, he was 23. And you know, Things like that, it, it's a wake up call for you. It's a reminder that you know this is what gets you. It's the, the streets either get you jail or, or dead. One of the two. It's not in between. You don't, you don't never hear no successful stories about drug dealers. You either hear about them being in jail or them being dead. And my friend, you know, in that case, RP, so he ended up dying. But that's what I'm telling you right now from, the, from that experience, you can learn from what he did. Because what I'm doing here now, I'm giving back to you because I wish somebody would have did that for me when I was young. Well, I wouldn't make the mistake I had made. Any other questions? No other questions? What happened to the quarterback? What happened to the quarterback? Yeah. Well, I ended up, my quarterback, he ended up going to Navarro College, Junior College, and he went there and they changed him to a safety, but he ended up getting in some more trouble. He ended up getting caught with a pound of weed. And so he was fake. He had gotten some trouble. And so once he left there, he left, went home, won national championship with them, left, went home, came back, and you know, being the friend I am, I got him at the junior college where I went to, and he was doing good, but once I left, and it was time for him to move on his own and start doing stuff as a grown man by himself, he ended up falling back off that track, and now, you know, he, he's not playing football anymore. Any other questions? Nobody else? Got questions? Y'all got no questions about college, no questions about how school is, nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Could you say morning class or night class? I would say, I would say I would have both. The reason why I have both, I, my, the way how my schedule was this semester, I had most of online classes, so I'm going more towards my degree. But morning classes, I like to have like, I would, I would say, because you know, your classes either go by like on Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're 50 minutes. And Tuesday to Thursday, they're out. So if I had, you have like, you take about five classes the whole semester, so that's 18 hours, about 18 hours. So I'll have three classes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll have like one at eight, then another one like at nine, and then that way I would have time to take a nap. That way when I wake up from my nap, I'll be able to study and do more things. But I'll, and to, to say what you said about the evening class, I also take evening classes as well, but those are way longer. Those are be like from like five o'clock to seven hours. So it with, with those classes, you really have to sit down and buckle and be focused that whole time compared to 50 minutes where you're just there. And you it's, you're just there for 50 minutes compared to you being there for two hours in the classroom hungry and just like like in the zone. You know what I mean? Any other questions? Yeah, what are just one or two one or two skills that you think are important to develop in high school that will help help you be help you be successful in college? Well, the first one is focusing, focusing and just maintaining your focus. Because so many times we get all trapped to school. But I mean, just other things, girl, boy, you know, sports, things that go on outside our life. If you maintain that focus that you have in school. It makes it easier for when you get into the real world. Because, and, and the second thing I would have to say is time management. Time management is critical. 
when I mean critical, if you want to hear anything else I say in this speech, time management is the most critical thing I learned in college. Because you'll have an assignment or you'll have a date, and the teacher will be like, okay, the date is, uh, we're going to say it, the date is due March, March the 25th. But this is in January he told you about this assignment. So you can either do two things. You can either do the assignment now and have it out the way, that way you won't have to worry about March 25th, or you can procrastinate and wait till March 25th come and then be like, oh man, I gotta do this work, oh man, he got tests and stuff. But it's mostly time management and how you manage your time in college, which makes people successful. Like I was telling you about the naps and stuff. I like to manage my time if I can take a nap before football practice. Any other questions? How do you manage your whole schedule when football How do I manage that? Well, we have, we have, like, they, you have counselors. And that's what the whole thing, like just like you have counselors here, you have counselors there. And the whole thing about when you have counselors, they're able to help manage what you, what first what your, what your curriculum is for your degree, as well as how it fits around your schedule and how, that's the whole reason to have a relationship with your counselors. So if you have, when y'all know y'all counselors here, make sure y'all take y'all SAT, that's very important. The higher your GPA is, the lower that you have to score on your SAT, and it's easier for you to get into a college that you want to get accepted. Any other questions? Yeah, what, one more. You, you read that verse from uh, Jeremiah. About, so uh, what kind of confidence when you make decisions now does that give you, knowing that, that God knows the plans for your life? You said, say that one more time? So you read that verse from Jeremiah about God knowing the plans for your life. What kind of confidence does that give you as you just make decisions? It, it's Maybe. huge. It's yeah. huge because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer you walk by walk by faith, not by sight, you know. And Aunt, Anthony and Teofilo, they brought me out here. You know, I didn't know what to expect from California. This is my, I'm not even from here, I'm from Texas. I'm from Houston, Texas. You know, when you think of California, you think of everything, you see it all on TV, the trolleys, everything. So when I came out here, I didn't know what to expect. And you know, I came out here on faith and like when I do, when I do things, I feel that God has orchestrated already in my life. And regardless, you know, sometimes we might get caught off track of what we're doing and not see what he's saying and be like, okay, he's giving me a sign, but I don't want to take that sign. And then he starts showing you more and more, like, I never thought I'd be right here in front of y'all speaking. You know, but my mom called it to me a long time ago. She said, John said, you got you to gotta think you're going to preach. I was like, me? Preaching? No, I'm not doing that. Like, but now look at me. I'm over here talking to y'all. So I mean, everything is every every move that you do have a plan and a purpose. Any other questions? Y'all got no questions back there? Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite part about being a teacher? Like, what's your favorite part? Uh, being a teacher, I think, is the fact that you get to see the students. Like, 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 you get